it's no fun when our kids are sick, but we may just have found the silver lining. Apple and raspberry and orange flavoured electrolyte slushies made by Rehydrate. Rehydrate slushies are a tasty way to get essential electrolytes into our little ones when they're dehydrated from sickness or even just the Aussie heat. They're delicious and they'll help your little ones feel better in no time. Grab Rehydrate from Coles today. It's the Happy Families Podcast with Dr. Justin Coulson, the podcast for the time-poor parent who just wants answers now. We're Luke and Susie, a husband and wife radio team and the parents of three young boys. And today we're looking at a question from Heather, who's wanting to figure out how extroverts and introverts can live together well in this isolation time. Dr. Justin, we need your help here. I mean, Heather's written a question and said, how do introverted parents end up with extroverted children? We know in a lot of homes around Australia right now, we suddenly have people who are introverts and extroverts living together all the time, or certainly a lot more than they might yeah. have used to with people working from home and, and kids home um, a lot more at the moment. And so these these personality types can uh, do really well together, but then there can come times where it's just a bit too much for the introvert or a little too little for the extrovert. What are your suggestions on how to survive this time with different personality types? Well, first of all, I'm not convinced that uh, what's really being asked is how, how do introverted parents have extroverted kids or vice versa. I think it's more how, how do we live together. I, I, I like the way you've um, tweaked that question because I think that's really at the heart of what's being asked. Uh, I think it's important that we understand what an extrovert is and what an introvert is because there's a lot of um, confusion and misconceptions around this. So the first thing that I would say is, is this. Researchers have discovered that introverts – tend to be very active in their own headspace. They tend to have a lot going on inside their brain. Therefore, they find stuff happening outside them to be a little bit troubling and a little bit overwhelming. That's why they like quiet. They like their own time and place. Whereas extroverts uh, like me and um, other people that we know, Susie. Yep. Um, <laughs> I've met uh, one or two along the way, yeah. Yeah, <laughs> yeah they, they, tend to, they tend to not have quite as much going on inside their brain and so they're constantly <laughs> looking externally for extra stimulation. Does it, does that... <laughs> that, that adds up, I reckon. That's a fair summary. <laughs> so that's, that's one theory about what's going on with introverts and extroverts and it probably applies quite a lot to what we're dealing with. There's another one that's probably worth mentioning just briefly as well and that is that um, extroverts are people who are energised by being around other people people. And introverts tend to be de-energized by being around other people. This kind of explains why somebody who's introverted can still smile and laugh and be part of a large group conversation. It's not like they're hiding in the corner because they're an introvert saying, get me out of this crowd. Introverts can function very well socially. They've got tremendous social skills quite often. Uh, In fact, sometimes extroverts have terrible social skills, but they just love being around people. Uh, And so, Again, when you look at what's going on with introverts and extroverts, you can see these totally different ways of being. Now, the context will have a little bit to do with how introverted or extroverted a person is. But ultimately, what we've got going on right now is families are living together more closely than maybe that we're even designed to. I mean, you know, families for the last however many millennia have woken up in the morning, sick morning, and then disappeared in different directions to go and get on with whatever had to happen mm-hmm. that day. And now we're not disappearing. We're all staying in the same That's right. know, few square meters. Mm-hmm. Stuck even, together. even take it back tribally. And there was like, there were communities, but you went out and hunted and gathered. And like, there, there's never been a time in history where we've been so confined for such periods of time. It, it does feel like it's uh, a never before seen kind of phenomenon. So getting along with each other is pretty tricky. I think that's probably the best word for it. So with that in mind, we've got a family where it's mixed with introverts and extroverts. How do we actually not throttle each other? How do we actually maybe even respect and honour each other enough to be able to thrive through this time? I really like those words, respect and honour. So 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 insightful and so important. Uh, One thing that pops into mind for me that could be helpful is just setting up boundaries, recognizing limitations and doing your best to make sure that the introverts are getting time away uh, and the extroverts are learning how to respect other people's space. So if I were an ex- sorry, if I were an introvert parent, somebody who is de-energized by lots of time with other people, what I might do is sit down in the morning and have a chat with the family about what our priorities are for the day. And we might identify 
let's say three basic priorities. We're going to do some home learning for an hour. We're going to do some physical activity for an hour. And we're going to have an hour working on a project around the house. You know, there's plenty of weeds that have come up lately, for example. Or, we're, we're, you know, we're painting all of the architraves in, in, in the living room, whatever <laughs> it might be. And so, and, and by the way, this is what I recommend families do, regardless of this, the, the personality makeup that you're dealing with. What we do then is we highlight, uh, you know, uh, as an introvert parent, I might say to my children, kids, you know that I like things to be quiet and sometimes I just like to have my own space, but we're not getting very much of that. And I know that you kids love having lots of time with me and with each other and bouncing off the walls because you've got so much energy and you love being around people. So we've got these three periods during the day. They're going to take about an hour each and some of them are going to be really close where we're going to be together and others we're going to have a little bit of separation and time. So you can kind of set that expectation, create that boundary. You might also say, well, what else are we going to do today? Well, we're going to come together for lunch, uh, but then we're going to have some separate, some separate time where we're doing our reading. Or, uh, you, and we, we essentially map out our day without looking too much at the clock. I strongly, strongly recommend that we don't sort of say, you know, from 9.15 until 10.45, we're doing this. And then from 10.46 to 11.03, it's going to be that. That's, that's too much pressure. But instead, we just highlight, these are the times we're going to come together. These are the times we're going to be in our own space. These are the activities we have that you can choose from when you're in your own space. These are the activities we'll be doing together. It doesn't take a lot of organization. I'd say five or ten minutes in the morning to sort of map out where you're going. And what that should do is not, not just help you to manage the personality issues around introverts and extroverts, but it'll also help you to give the children a sense of predictability, a sense of certainty around what's going to happen today, how the day is going to roll out. Uh, they, they're not going to be on your case constantly. Oh, and one other thing that will help tremendously, if you can just put a sign on the fridge each morning saying, tonight dinner is... Yeah. <laughs> yes. Yes. That saves a because lot of Because if you're an introvert parent and you can answer that one question at seven o'clock in the morning, uh, just point at the fridge and, and they'll leave you alone. So long as they know what dinner is as they're having breakfast, so long as they know what dinner is when they're having lunch, so long as they know what dinner is throughout the day, everything's going to be okay. You'll, you'll, you'll get through this. If you don't know why that advice is relevant and so hitting home to the point, you probably don't have children. (laughs) (laughs) Certainly not our 10 year old. (laughs) It's like the only thing he's interested at any point of any day. What's the next thing to eat? (laughs) Yeah. (laughs) Well, I think this is wonderful. Suze, as an introvert, as someone who Mm -hmm. in that space is, is struggling, do you feel like we've got some plans that we can? Implement to, oh, 100%. to help you. I've, I've had my brain's been ticking over as we've gone, actually. Because I think the plan for, for me, Justin, what you just said, the plan is not so much for our children in this case, it's for Susie. It's for her to know where can she get her next bit of time to herself. Yeah, and, and, and I'm glad that you pointed that out, Luke. It's not just about the kids. It's about you uh, as an extrovert. Uh, recognizing a wife who sort of says, you know, every now and again, this is a little bit too much. And during the day, normally I get that downtime. I'm not getting it now. And so as a husband, you've got an opportunity to step in and say, kids, you know, mum doesn't get excited about being around people all day like you, like you do and like I do. So we're going to go and do that walk around the block. We're going to go for that bike ride because as a family, we're allowed to do that in spite of the government regulations saying there's so many things we can't do. We're going to go and give mum a little bit of time and a little bit of space so that she can just recalibrate and re-energize and, and have that downtime. Uh, what, a, what a wonderful gift you can do. And if you're in a partnered relationship, being mindful of that personality difference and looking for ways that you can serve, it will change your relationship for the better. If you're on your own, uh, that's a different kettle of fish and that's where those boundaries and that family meeting become even more important. Mm. So good, Dr. Dustin Coulson. Thank you. Thank you so much for talking this through with us. Really appreciate it. Yeah, always a pleasure. If you've enjoyed the podcast, we'd love for you to get onto iTunes and leave a rating and review. You can click on the stars and leave a comment. Like Mella Flewity did, who said, wonderful parenting resource. Dr. Dustin Coulson's podcast, books, videos, online articles, etc., the list goes on, are such wonderful resources for parents who want to encourage positivity and happiness. Using the latest evidence, he communicates ideas in a way that is easy to understand and with a respect for how hard parenting can be. Definitely a great place to start if you're feeling a need to make some changes. Now, that's a good If you'd like Justin to speak at your school or organisation, just visit happyfamilies.com.au.